Welcome, welcome, welcome. If we haven't met, I'm Viv. This is Art with Viv. We're just going to jump right into it. We're not going to do a whole lot of nonsense today. Not a lot of chit chat. We're just getting straight to the painting. Um, now, I do have a real time version of this buffalo on my Patreon. If you join the dabblers level, it is uh, just right under an hour. So if you're interested in that, I'll link my Patreon below. But I'm first started off by coating this Pantone postcard with a couple of coats of clear gesso because that card does have a shiny surface. I wanted to make sure that my gouache stuck to it, grabbed onto that surface really well. Started with the eye. That's no surprise there. If you follow me for a minute, you know anytime I'm doing a living creature, I start with the eyes. So his eye was sort of a dark, dark, dark brown. And then it had a few little lighter highlights. They're not actually stark white. They're kind of a lighter blue. Then I'm going to work on that skin, his upper eyelid, his lower eyelid. There's no fur on them. They're smooth. And what I did was I just mixed up a dark, warm gray first. Then I slapped that down on his eyelid at the top. Then I took and added a little bit of white to that mixture and then blended it around the edges of that top part of his eyelid while they all were still wet. The good thing about gouache is you can control your blend unlike watercolor. Watercolor wants to just free flow into each other while it's wet so you have to be really careful. With gouache you don't have that problem. I'm finding I love that more and more. But like watercolor gouache does reactivate once you wet it. Now I'm taking a deeper blue and going right over the top part of his eye and a little bit down here out on his lower eyelid. His eye is surrounded by some really curly brown fur and it casts a bit of a shadow so I wanted that darker area up there above and below the eye where the fur is casting shadows on the skin, the lids. I'm just making it a little bit darker on the top. Now I'm just going to go ahead and add a few little darker areas again right around. I'm making those a little bit wider going ahead in there putting the shadow under his eye doing all this while it's still wet I'm not even layering it this is actually my first layer and I may come back and add a few touches of highlights here and there but right now I am making one layer and the way that I'm doing that to get the different colors is I'm just blending everything while it's wet and I can get away with that because these colors are all similar you know, they're all the tones of gray. Now, if I was doing, say, a, gr a green and a red, I would not blend those together while they were wet because I would end up with a muddy brown or a muddy gray, and I don't want that. So you have to know the properties of your paint. You have to know what your color theory and what colors you get when you mix each other. So there's no way I would mix a red and a green while they were still wet if I wanted nice crisp red and green objects so just know that the only reason I'm being able to blend this on the surface is because the colors are in the same color family and it's really just one color that I've added either white or blue or purple to or brown to the brown warms it up the blue cools it down so it's really essentially a gray that I've added different colors to to either warm it up or cool it down now I went ahead with his nostril. What I first did with that nostril is I outlined it with the really pale blue highlights. Then I came back in there with that warmer gray and, and blended that across his nostrils. Then I came in with a more purpley gray, got in some of the darker areas. And for this one, oh my goodness, I used black from the tube, premixed black for that nostril. I used Premix black for around his nose. I know I always say don't you know I don't like to use black from the tube but in this instance it was exactly what I needed. I don't mind that it looks flat. I want it to look flat because these are flat shadows across his nostril and inside of his I mean across his muzzle and inside of his nostril. So rules are made to be broken especially when you make them up yourself so I went right ahead and broke that little rule. I encourage you to break as many rules as you want to and see how it goes because sometimes once you know how everything actually works in a painting, you can break those rules and get away with it as long as you know what you're trying to achieve at the end. 
So then I mixed up some browns and I got a, a nice dark brown, sort of an umber brown. Then I went with some sienna. I mixed in a little bit of white with that sienna. I also mixed in a touch of blue with some of that brown to give it a more grayed effect. Because let's face it, burnt sienna is on the orange spectrum. If you add blue, you're gonna knock it back and gray it down. You're gonna tone it down. So you have to think about those too. Like, you know, is burnt sienna really just an orange? And, you know, if I mix certain colors with orange, what do I get? So always be thinking about your color theory when you're painting. Always thinking about exactly what you're painting with and what you need for each area. Again, I'm just painting in a bunch of shapes. Um, this time, this, this, I really liked this painting because it was so messy. Like, I didn't have to be exact. I didn't have to do tiny little feathers. He just had globs of curly fur and I could just just I could just smoosh it all around smoosh those browns together and all I had to do was make sure that I put them in the right place for the highlights the right place for the shadows and um, make sure that they're kind of in the right vicinity and right right place right shape size all that stuff so now with this um, this burnt sienna I added a little bit of yellow to it to really brighten it up there above his head because the sun is hitting him there. So there's a little bit of glow to that particular fur. So I added yellow to it to brighten it up and make it look even warmer where the sun was hitting it. And you'll notice where the sun is not directly hitting the buffalo, his fur is a lot cooler, has more blue tones in it. So again, those are things that you need to think about. I got a creamy sort of brownish gray, more brown than gray, but it's still a grayed down brown. And I did that side. He is actually curving around. That is his, that is his back on the right hand side of his face. This is his shoulder on the left hand side. So he's kind of curving around there. And um, so I'm just trying to get all of that in the way that he's sort of bent around there in the reference photo. Now for the horn, his horn is sort of a blue gray at the tip and sort of a creamy white, not quite stark white, more of a creamy white at the bottom. So I just added a little bit of a brown to that white, just, just a touch of brown, just to make it more creamy. And then I'm just gonna take some gray and do some highlights across the tip. I think that I got it a little bit too light, so I'm just gonna come back in here with some of that darker blue-gray that I mixed up and blend that down in there and knock back some of that too light highlights that I got on the tip. Then I'm just gonna take and mix an even brighter color of that white and with less brown, so it's a brighter white. And I'm just gonna do some texture marks while it's still wet in there so that the edges will blend slightly. I put a white highlight at the very tip where the, the curve of the horn is curving up on top of that white space. Now I'm just mixing in some little blue, uh, blue gray with more blue than gray and going to the tip of that and adding that in just to give it a little bit more texture as well. I really enjoyed doing the horns. I don't know why, but the horns were my favorite part. They were so easy, and I think they came out pretty good for my attempt at this. Gouache is really growing on me. I am loving this gouache. I am loving doing this buffalo. Now I'm just coming back to that nostril, the nose, the muzzle. It has dried. So I'm coming back in with some highlights where I want to brighten up some of those areas where I want to draw attention to. Of course, I'm looking at my reference, making sure I'm getting those highlights in the correct spot and adding a few more mid-tones and a few more shadows in there as well. That just gives it a little bit more of a three-dimensional look that I'm going for. And um, I'm really I'm really happy with this buffalo. I don't, I don't know, I've, I'm not a big painter of buffaloes, but I'm liking this buffalo. He's starting to really shape up. You can really see that he is indeed an American bison in all of his majesty. And I'm just adding highlights here and there to sort of start finishing it off. And that just pulls some of those areas up, elevates it a little bit more so that um, he just doesn't look like all flat one mid-tone. So I'm just giving him some little highlights to break up all of that mid-tone brown. 
and because he has highlights in the actual reference photo. Now I'm going ahead and I'm lightening up his back hip there. That's actually his haunch that I'm painting from the way he's curved around and just lightening it up just a tiny bit. I'm adding a little bit more texture around his neck area. Buffalo have those humongous necks with the big humps. They are just big, huge animals. They are beautiful animals. And um, once I get that in, I'm just going to do a little highlight. I've got all that fur highlighted the way that I want it. I've got the shadows where I want it. So I notice that there is a bright highlight going down the side of this horn. So I'm just taking some really pale blue gray and I did it right along the edge and then right toward the center part. I just blended it in with the tip of my brush, leaving that really pale on the edge there. But of course, going towards mid-tone toward the center, I'm darkening up a little bit of it. It went just a little bit too light in that area. So I just took a little bit more of that blue, added it while it was still wet and blended it with the tip of my brush. I'm using again my golden maple detail brushes love them for gouache love them for watercolor especially if you're working really small scale so i think i'm going to call mr buffalo finished thank you for watching i hope you got a little bit of information out of this got some value from it and a big shout out to my patrons thank y'all so much for your support i appreciate y'all and i am so glad that you are part of my family so there you go i hope all of your artistic endeavors all of your adventures are successful, and I will see you again soon.